Recently, I had this urge to play a pinball game with a ton of fan service on the Nintendo Switch. Coincidentally, the newest Senran Kagura game that just came out meets this criteria exactly. It's Senran Kagura Peach Ball for the Nintendo Switch. Just from the footage I'd seen on the internet, I already knew that I'd like this game. I know there's a lot of people who don't get these kind of games, which is fine. Peach Ball is one of the funniest games in the Senran Kagura franchise. That's not due to any amazing writing or anything, but with how the fan service is integrated into the gameplay. People complain about low effort fan service. Well, with Senran Kagura games, it's high effort fan service you're supposed to not take seriously. And that's true with Peach Ball as well. I will say that while the fan service antics are a ton of fun, the game does have one big flaw. And that is the lack of tables. There's only two, which makes things much more repetitive than they need to be. We'll talk about all of that, but first let's go over some of the basics and the fact that there's a physical release of this game. Here it is. It's a regular Switch case, as you can see. It's nice that we get a physical release, especially because Reflections is a digital-only thing here in the West. That's because Face is particularly funny on the cover. It cracks me up for some reason. The back is alright too. It does say something I've never seen before. Warning, cancer and reproductive harm. And then some California website. I know this in the state of California thing has existed forever, but I've never seen them on a Switch game before. In fact, all my other games don't have this writing on them at all. Also, the wording comes across as very oversimplified. Do I have cancer now? Are my genitals knackered because I own this game? Very strange. Anyway, the best part is inside because we have the elusive Nintendo Switch game manual. I was beginning to think that these were just a myth. It's properly in color too. It reminds me of a like a taller version of the old Game Boy manuals. It's great, but hold on to your cancer-causing manual because there's more. You get stickers. Nice little bonus, but I'm just going to leave them here because I don't like to ruin a complete game by removing its contents. All right, time to talk about the game's story. Despite Senran Kagura being about ninja girls, you don't really need to know much about the previous games to get a kick out of Peach Ball. Nevertheless, conversations between characters are more enjoyable if you're at least a little bit up on your lore. The story of this game is very light-hearted, kind of like the side quests in the main games. Yomi, Asuka, Murasaki, Yumi, and Riona attend a fighting game tournament at their local arcade. Haruka works part-time at the arcade and because she's got a bunch of downtime working there, she ends up doing a bunch of chemistry experiments, because why wouldn't you? By accident, the uh, five girls end up becoming exposed to Haruka's newest concoction, which turns them all into animal girls. This sounds like something that would happen in To Love Rue, but things become more strange. For some reason, the way to return the girls back to normal is to bring them into a pinball machine and expose them to something called the Peach Ball. Interestingly, you, the player, are part of the story. Basically, you're just a random who's picked to play the pinball machine, and you never get any dialogue. But it's interesting that both Senran Kagura Switch games have the player be part of the story, even if it's just like a little bit. Another similarity between Peach Ball and Reflections is that both games feature the same cast. Yomi, Asuka, Murasaki, Yumi, and Riona. Haruka is there in Peach Ball, but she isn't one of the characters you can hurl your balls at. Except for the ending credits. So, she doesn't really count. Alright, let's talk about the gameplay. You've got your usual flippers at the bottom, which are controlled by L and R, or LZ and uh, RZ, whatever you prefer. Personally, I like LZ and RZ because um, they're bigger on both the Joy-Con and Pro Controller. You can shake the table with either of the analog sticks. It's not that effective, it's more like a little bump. It actually doesn't seem to affect the ball too much. Shaking the table occasionally knocks the girl over, which gives you more points when you hit her vital spots. Each game is divided into three segments. This meter shows that here. The more points you get, the higher it goes. Once you fill up the first segment, you unlock the first sexy challenge. It's a mini game that's actually pretty easy. Not only is it a way to rack up points, but it's also the most fan y part of the game. There's a handful of different mini games, and it's pretty easy to get an S rank on. There's a few tricks for each game, and you learn those pretty quick. Like for example, the balloon blowing up one. You have to activate the flippers just as the ball is on the part just after the hinge, so you hit the pump handle for maximum points. And you later and the ball just flies off to the side, and if it does hit, the points aren't that much. There's another sexy challenge after the second segment. 
At the very end, you unlock Super Sexy Challenge. You basically just bombard the character's boobs or butt with pinballs. It's very difficult to do poorly here, and I think that's intentional because it's supposed to be like a reward. Once that's done, you get into this mode. I don't know what to call it, but here you manipulate the vitals directly. You do have to keep a rhythm. For those of you who are inexperienced, just going for it doesn't work. You just keep a steady pace to keep the multiplayer high, and you're good. I actually laughed the first time I saw this in a uh, gameplay video. It's just a lot of fun. There's several things you can aim for when playing. The list on the right shows you various things you can hit. Each time you complete one of the tasks, you can do it again for more points. This lights up the peach letters above the flippers as you complete them. Once every letter is lit up, fairies will spawn. You get points for hitting them and especially getting rid of them. If you do that enough times, a heart will spawn on the table. If you hit it, something called After Break will activate. It's a way to earn extra points. The girl will get knocked over and hitting the breasts or butt gives you a ton of points. There's a few different ways to activate After Break. It also depends which table you're playing. For example, on one of them, hitting the ferris wheel a few times works well and is relatively easy. The girl will watch the ferris wheel spin, get dizzy and fall over. The teacups on the right work well too. Hitting the character a bunch of times is also another technique you can use. That's a strange sentence. If you get enough points during After Break, you can activate Fever Time for even more points. There's also Super Fever Time, which can be activated during something called Hustle Time, which is when multiple balls come onto the playing field at the same time. That's usually the most chaotic moment in the game, especially if you have fairies just um, roaming around as well. The balls just go all over the place. There's more to it, and certain things depend on the table. Unfortunately, there are only two tables. I would have also liked if the bumpers did a bit more, I think they're a bit too tame. The teacups, which do act like more aggressive bumpers in one of the tables, are isolated from the rest of the playing area, so you don't really get that effect. The bumpers also have this strange ability of being able to bounce the ball just slightly over the opposite bumper for you to launch again with the flipper. It's really easy to get a pattern going, and it comes across as unrealistic because it happens so many times. The game does not run at 60 frames per second, which disappointed me quite a bit. For a pinball game, I think 60 frames per second is a very important target to achieve. Some other stuff I've noticed is that the flippers sometimes hit the ball when they really shouldn't be. Occasionally, you can save a ball, even though it's clear that the ball would just go through the gap between the flippers in real life. Speaking of balls, you can select one from a few different ones in the beginning. They look like fur balls with the girls' faces on them. I think the only thing that changes between them is the rumble intensity. I notice no difference in the physics. Since the ball is sometimes hard to see with all the stuff going on screen, I found the white Yumi ball to be the best to use in that regard. There are several game modes. Story mode has five different routes to explore, one for each character. Every route is like an alternate retelling of the events. Each route consists of five games of pinball. Assuming you don't lose a game, that's 25 overall to finish story mode. Each time you finish a route, you unlock part of an image. Free mode allows you to customize what you want. You can choose the character, clothing, and the table. Pretty straightforward. If you're done with story mode, then free mode is probably good to muck around with. Since you earn money playing, you also get to spend that money on things. It's the usual Senran Kagura stuff. Outfits, hairstyles, accessories, music, CGs slash movies. It's how it's always been, so no surprise there for veterans. You can change who the store assistant is, but I gotta say, it just doesn't feel quite right without IMA. There's a link to the Nintendo eShop, which allows you to see all the DLC. Thankfully, it's just music from the other Sendon Kagura games, so you're not missing out on features, game modes, or characters if you choose not to spend money on the game you already bought. There's the dressing room, which you can use to, you know, change characters' clothing, add or remove accessories, as well as position accessories. Diorama mode is present like always. You can position characters around as you wish and pose them in all kinds of ways. Intimacy mode exists because this is not a PlayStation game. Honestly, at this point, it just feels like a bare-bones version of Reflections. I guess that means the game did its job. Next, let's talk about graphics. They do look quite good. Everything looks very happy and cheerful. The colors are quite saturated, a bit too much in my opinion. Compared to something like Burst Renewal, you'll see that the Switch graphics don't quite match up in shading either. It's a bit more flat looking here on the Switch, but it's still alright and definitely not ugly. 
There are moments where you see a lot of aliasing, especially right after a girl turns back to human. There's a clear line between the skin and the darker background, where you can see a long and winding staircase of pixels. During normal gameplay, it's less obvious because the overall image is so busy, so it's not that bad. The fact that Peach Ball doesn't run at 60 FPS is much more disappointing. Despite having fun with the game, I would have enjoyed it much more if it ran, well, not like this. The menus that are purely 2D do run at 60 FPS though. It's most noticeable when your score comes up after finishing a game. Every time I see this smooth animation, I think, that's what I wanted. If there's ever a PC version, I'd love to play it. Reflections made the switch to PC after a while, so there's hope yet. The music is interesting. Occasionally it sounds like something you'd hear in a Super Mario game, which is kind of funny. I do think the music fits the game though. Like I said earlier, if you want music from earlier games, you can buy them as downloadable content. I've got no problem with the sound effects either. Nothing particularly stands out, which is a good thing usually. In this case, I say it is. Overall, I enjoyed Senran Kagura Peach Ball quite a bit. The fanservice mini games are fun and make me laugh. I wish there was more variation. I think two tables isn't enough and you get to know all the mini games in just a couple of hours, which hinders replayability. If there was a bit more stuff, then I'd enjoy the game even more. Same thing with the frame rate. It is fun, though some people might not think there's enough content here for what you pay. On another note, this might be Kenichiro Takaki's last Senran Kagura game in which he had full control over. Since the upcoming mainline game has supposedly been altered quite a bit due to Sony's interference. So that's an interesting bit of trivia, I suppose. I hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know in the comments what you think of the game if you've played it. Thank you again, members of Patreon. Check out the Patreon page to get your name on the end card and watch videos before they come out. Also check out the second channel for anime niche game news and other less edited content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.